Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we've got a couple of things to discuss, including a couple of signings, uh, playoff update as the Stanley Cup final could be drawn to a close in the very near future, a couple of injury updates, uh, some more news involving Calgary and maybe even the Rangers and the Senators, and some trade rumors involving the Flyers, Jets, and Flames. We'll get to all that coming up right now. Hello and welcome to another video here at the Entertainment Hockey Channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a few things, and as per usual, we'll start with the signings that have happened recently. So to start with, uh, we'll get to the one entry-level contract that has happened, and that is that the Tampa Bay Lightning have signed Emil Martinson Lilleberg to a two-year entry-level contract that have an average annual value of $870,000, and they'll begin the start of next year. Now for Martinson Lilleberg, uh, he's definitely been doing really well. Uh, he was a 2021 fourth round pick of the Arizona Coyotes, uh, but he wasn't signed for the Coyotes. He went to free agency, and the Bulls ended up signing him. So good for the Bulls to sign another good young prospect. Uh, Lilleberg's been playing over in the SHL over the past couple of years. Had 7 assists in 47 games last year, uh, but was a much better player this year, putting up 3 goals and 11 points in 46 games. So definitely looked like a little bit more of a dominant defenseman. Uh, he's a left shot defensive prospect, so I think in time, maybe Lilleberg could definitely be challenging for like a third pair role for, on the Bolts. Probably still going to need maybe one more year in the SHL, and then maybe a year or two in the AHL, uh, as he was still a really recent draft selection. But it's a good addition for the Bolts to get a prospect who wasn't signed with the Arizona Coyotes. So, a good signing for for the Tampa Bay Lightning to get a good young prospect signed, and even though he's probably going to be maybe two, three, maybe even four years away from challenging, I think in time he could definitely be a good third pair defenseman with the Bolt. So a good signing there. Uh, then we have a couple of contract extensions for depth players. Uh, first with the Colorado Avalanche, they signed left shot defenseman Wyatt Amadit to a one-year contract extension that's the average annual value of seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. They will begin at the start of next year. Now for Amadit, uh, he was an undrafted player. He was signed a contract a couple years ago with the Avalanche. He spent a majority of his season in the NCAA a couple years ago. Uh, was able to come sign his entry level contract, get into three games a couple years ago with the Colorado Eagles, so the Colorado AHL affiliates. And then he played the entirety of last year in the AHL. He did quite well putting up. Three goals and 18 points in 52 games. So he obviously did well enough that the Avalanche shot that he would be a good player to extend. So they did. And I think Amada could definitely be a really good depth defender for the Avalanche. I don't think he'll be able to make the NHL with the Avs' deep defense. And he's still one of the lower end prospects. So even if they got some injuries, I'm not sure if he'd be called up. But at least it gives the Avalanche a little bit more depth for next year as well. So good to see Amada get signed by the Avs, and he's going to be staying there at least for next year with the Avalanche. A couple of other ones will be Oscar Dansk, a goaltender who re-signed in Calgary on a one-year $775,000 deal that will begin at the start of next year. Now for Dansk, he's had some opportunities at the NHL level, mostly with Vegas a couple of years ago. Uh, the past couple of years, he's been spending uh, away from the NHL. Uh, last year, he spent the entire season in the KHL, and they're all right, putting up a 9-10 save percentage and a 2.66 goals against average in 17 games. Uh, he signed a one-year deal in Calgary this offseason, was Mostly their fourth string goalie behind Dustin Wolf. Uh, Donsk was able to get a pretty similar stat line to what he had in the KHL the year prior, putting up a 905 save percentage, 2.75 goals against average in 17 games. So he looked like a really good fourth string goalie. Uh, he can be a good third stringer, and with the Flames most likely having Wolf at the NHL level next year, they're going to need a good third stringer. So good to see a Donsk go sign. I could see him definitely be like the third string goaltender, maybe get called up if there's injuries. But definitely, Dansk is a really good AHL level goaltender at this point in time. And I think he could definitely be a really good uh, depth option for the Flames. So good signing for there. Uh, the Dallas Stars have signed depth forward Frederick Karlstrom to a one-year $275,000 deal that will begin at the start of next year. So same thing as the other two. I think Karlstrom, though, has a lot more opportunity to get to the NHL. He has actually gotten a couple of stints these past couple of years. Uh, two years ago, he was mostly an NHL forward, putting up 16 goals and 29 points in 65 games. Although he did get into three NHL games, putting up a assist. Uh, this past year, once again, more of an AHL forward, putting up 10 goals and 26 points in only 47 games. 
but he did get into five NHL games putting up no points. So he's definitely been more of a depth forward. Uh, he's gotten called up on uh, multiple occasions, but he's definitely been more of like a 13th, 14th forward. So in my eyes, Karlstrom most likely would start the season in the AHL, but if the Stars are into injuries early on, I could see him definitely be called up. So definitely a good signing for the Stars. Uh, like I said, Karlstrom's more of a 13th forward, so probably won't start the season on the NHL roster, but if the team runs into injuries, expect Karlstrom to probably be one of the first call-ups the Stars make. So another good signing there. And then finally here, the big signing that I forgot to mention on Saturday, and that is that the LA Kings have gone there, the defenseman locked up. Uh, Vlasov Gavrikov, who was a pending UFA on the defensive end, was able to sign a two-year, $5.88 million extension with the LA Kings. I'll start at the beginning of next year. Now, as we talked about last Thursday, uh, the Kings cleared some cap space. They moved Cal Peterson and Sean Walker in the Ivan Provorov deal to try and get some cap space to, as I said, go after a goalie and re-sign Gavrikov. And they finally do wind up getting Gavrikov signed. So, pretty good deal for him and the Kings. Uh, just under $6 million for the next two years, I think, is a pretty good deal for Gavrikov. Uh, he's definitely a solid top four defenseman and should be able to round out the Kings top four. Uh, last couple of years he's had some pretty solid seasons. A couple of years ago with the Jackets, he had five goals and 28 points in 80 games. This past year with the Kings and Jackets split, uh, he had six goals and 19 points in 72 games. So he was definitely a solid NHL defender. Uh, more of a defensive defenseman, but still a pretty solid one at that. Uh, so he's going to win the Kings for the next two years. And I think that really rounds out the LA Kings decor. So good to see how the Kings were able to get him signed. Uh, moving Peterson and Walker were big parts of making that happen. And now Gavrikov, who was one of the top defensemen on the board in the free agency, uh, is now off the board. So one less defenseman that other teams are going to have a chance to sign. But still, really good bring back for the LA Kings after they required him to trade that line. But definitely, good signing for Gavrikov, who's going to remain with the Kings the next couple of years and continue to build his stock higher to hopefully get a bigger payday in a couple of years' time when he becomes a UFA again. Uh, good signing for Karlstrom in Dallas, Dansk in Calgary, and Modit in Colorado to all get new one-year contracts to continue to be good depth forwards in their organizations. And then good to see Lilleberg get his entry-level contract with the... L Tampa Bay Lightning after not being signed by the Arizona Coyotes. So, good signings all around for those five teams. Uh, next, we'll go over to the playoff update part of the video. Now, on Saturday, we had a really one quite good game. As we know, the Knights went into the game up 2 1 with a chance to take a 3 1 series lead. Panthers looking for their second straight win and to tie the series up at 2. So it was a really close game. Within the first 100 seconds of the game, uh, Chandler Stevenson was able to find himself on a breakaway off a beautiful pass from Zach Whitecloud, and he was able to streak in, put one on net, and put it past Bobrovsky to give the Knights the early 1-0 lead. Uh, not really much else happened in the later stages of the first. Panthers did fight back a little bit, but it was 1-0 Vegas after 1. Uh, the second period, about 7 minutes into the second, uh, Stevenson will find the net again to give the Knights a 2-0 lead. So it was a really good goal from Stevenson, really great game from him to give the Knights a 2-0 lead. Then four minutes later on this goal here, uh, William Carlson was able to give the Knights a 3-0 lead. It's thanks to the rebound goal that he was able to get. And that stretched the lead out to 3-0. I know there were a lot of people who thought that this would be reminiscent of like game six between the Knights and the Stars, where the Knights just ran away with it. But the Panthers were able to bring it back at least a little bit. First, uh, one of the flukiest goals we will ever see uh, Brandon Montour was able to shoot the puck on net. It bounced off of McNabb's skate and then off of Shea Theodore's shin pad and bounced right into the net. No chance for Aiden Hill to get it, that puck. And that cut the lead to 3 1. So 3 1 for the Golden Knights at the end of 2. And that's the way we went to the third period. And then we would find the Barkov Montour connection again. This time Montour would find Barkov. And on this goal here, remember all the clips were credited to Sportsnet. But on this goal here, Alex Barkov was able to make it a 3-2 game. Early, with about 16 minutes left, it was now a 3-2 game, and the Panthers were making it interesting. Uh, there would be not too much else action until about the last couple of minutes. Definitely, it was really nerve-wracking for the Golden Knights to try and roll into their lead. Uh, the Panthers will put the goalie and make it interesting. They'll even get a power play with about 20 seconds left to make it a 6-on-4. 
but they were not able to capitalize as the Aiden Hill and the Vegas Golden Knights were able to hold on 3-2 to two to take a 3-1 series lead. So, something that we didn't see very much in the first three games. In the first three games, there were a lot of penalties on both sides. In this game, there were only two penalties. One within the tw last 20 seconds on the Golden Knights, and then one in the early parts of the seconds that wasn't really an overly great call on the Panthers. So, unlike the first three games, the penalties were few and far between. So maybe something else to expect as the series goes on. There probably won't be as many penalties as there were in the first two games. Uh, but still, Knights were able to get to a 3 nothing lead. And they were just able to come away with the victory. So definitely, Panthers, a lot better played in Florida than the first two games in Vegas. Vegas looked like they were dominating in Vegas. Florida definitely was able to bring that game back. So definitely looked really good for the Florida Panthers. It just wasn't enough to tie the game and send it to overtime. So Vegas now takes a 3-1 series lead into tonight's game action. The Golden Knights will have the Stanley Cup in the building in Vegas with a chance to end the Florida Panthers. An interesting side note, the Florida Panthers, to this point in time, have never won in Vegas. They're, I think, if I'm correct, the only team that has never been able to win in Vegas. So the Panthers have a steep task ahead of them to try and send this one back to six and send it back to Florida. But they looked much better in the last two games. Would not surprise me if they did. But still, Vegas looked really good. They always get it to a three nothing lead, hold on to it in game four, and now take a three one series lead into what could be the final game of this year's NHL season later tonight. So definitely going to be interesting to see and I can't wait to see if the Knights are able to win the Stanley Cup in five games over the Panthers at home ice or if the Panthers are able to be forcing a game six and if we would be heading to back to Florida for game six on Friday definitely interesting to see but definitely good game from the Knights to hold on and take the 3-1 series lead uh, a couple of injury updates to discuss Matthew Kachuk was not 100% in Game 4, definitely missed a chunk of time in the game, and even though Kachuk played about 16 minutes in Game 4, he did not look 100%. Uh, he currently has an upper body injury in his day-to-day, -day, and Anthony Duclair is currently undisclosed injury, and he's out day-to-day. -day. So those are two really big pieces of their forward group. Duclair's a good, speedy, top-six winger who can definitely help offensively, and Kachuk is the heart and soul of that team. So hopefully both are able to go for this game tonight. Uh, given the fact that it is the Stanley Cup Final, I would be quite surprised if they weren't. But definitely, it seems like Duclair and Kachuk are banged up. So, it is possible that they could both miss. But I would definitely expect them both to make it. So, definitely interesting to see, but definitely something to watch out for. As Kachuk and Duclair both look to be banged up. And it is possible they could miss tonight's game. So, definitely something to keep your eye on. Uh, that's all the injury updates we're going to get to today. A uh, couple of news updates to talk about. Uh, first, as we talked about on Saturday, uh, I was going to get into a little bit more in-depth about this one, so it was officially signed, and it has been officially signed, as the Calgary Flames have brought in Adam Huska to be their new head coach. So, Huska has been in the Flames organization for the past couple of years. For the past five years, he was able to be the assistant coach for the Flames, so definitely, once again, just like Conroy, he was an internal option and got a lot of good votes from the players. So definitely, it looks like Huska seems to be a really liked player around the Calgary Flames organization. And it looks like he's going to be a really good fit there. So like I said, he's been the Flames assistant coach for the past five years. So he already knows a lot of the Flames players. I definitely think that with Conroy and Huska now the new tandem of GM and head coach in Calgary, it's quite possible we could see a lot more younger players with the Flames. So maybe guys like Peltier, Coronado, Wolf. Uh, Zari at some points next year could all have a shot at NHL level. So definitely interesting to see. But good to see that Husko was able to get the uh, coaching opportunity. There was a lot of other talk that maybe like a guy like of who is their AHL coach or maybe a guy like Reardon or Green would be also options for the Flames, but they do go with Huska. So good to see that they went for the internal option, and just like Conroy, a guy who is familiar with the Calgary Flames players. So the Flames now have their head coach, and now with Huska being in Calgary, Cronin being in Anaheim, Carberry being in Washington, Babcock most likely being in Columbus, that leaves just one head coaching opportunity left, and that's New York Rangers. 
and as I was also going to talk about here, uh, nothing stands stone, but there was some talk late last night that Peter Laviolette's name was getting a lot of steam with New York Rangers, and it sounds like at this point, the Rangers will most likely be signing him as their new head coach. There's still a possibility that John Hines is the new head coach, so nothing's official yet, so we have to wait and see. But as soon as there's some official word on that, I will be discussing that. So definitely something interesting to keep your eye on. But it sounds like Laviolette to New York is starting to gain some steam. And also, uh, it sounds like the Ottawa Senators bid should be finalized sometime soon. Uh, there was a lot of reports last night that they were saying coming to a head. And the much distant future, we will be getting the official owner of the Sens update. So as I record this video, I don't have any updates right now. But it sounds like it could happen within the next few days. So if there's an owner update uh, by Thursday, I'll definitely be talking about it in my next video. But definitely, uh, Huska is now the new head coach in Calgary. So an internal candidate who knows the players, I think that's a really good option for the Calgary Flames. Uh, hopefully they can get some more younger players in there because you know it was really a tough challenge to do this year. Uh, it sounds like Laviolette could be the guy in New York, and we could get an announcement about that in a couple of days' time. And it sounds like the Ottawa Senators' owner will be announced in the not just the future. And if, like I said, if there's anything by Thursday on the New York Rangers situation or the Ottawa Senators situation, I'll talk about it. And if not by Thursday, then whenever there's some news about it, I'll definitely talk about it. But definitely, it sounds like the Rangers head coaching search and the Ottawa Senators' owner search are both going to be coming to a head in the not just in future. So good for the Sens and the Rangers to be closing in on those and good for Ryan Huska to be the new head coach of the Calgary Flames. So that concludes the news portion part of the video and now we go over to the trade rumor part of the video. So definitely there's a couple of trade rumors here I want to discuss. Uh, we'll start with the Calgary Flames and Elliot Freeman on his recent 32 Thoughts podcast as well as 32 Thoughts segment on Hockey Night in Canada has said that a name he's hearing that could be moved in the not too distant future would be Noah Hannafin. Uh, Hannafin is amongst those players in Calgary who are going to be entering the final year of their deals. you got Hannafin, Tanev, Zadorov on the defensive end, Toffoli, Lindholm, and Backlund on the offensive end. Now these are guys who the Flames really do want to try and sign and keep around for the next little while. But if they can't find contract extensions and those who want to try and either not want to sign with Calgary or wait until next year to try and talk contract extensions then there's a real likely possibility that the Flames could try and move some of those players. And Hannafin seems to be one of the guys who could be on his way out. Hannafin's a really good top four defenseman. Uh, he was acquired in a trade with the Carolina Hurricanes a number of years ago, and he's been a solid top four defenseman with the Calgary Flames ever since. Uh, he's making one more year left at a reasonable $4.5 million cap it, so it shouldn't be too hard for them to trade him if this is the route that they wind up going. Uh, he's, a, like I said, really good top four defenseman, so if he does not want to sign a contract extension with the Flames, I could definitely see him being one of the guys who are on their way out this offseason. Uh, Calgary's definitely going to have a ton of decisions to make, so as Elliot Freeman said, he's just hearing that Hannafin is a name who's out there right now. So if the Flames aren't able to sign him, I could definitely see Hannafin be a guy who's on his way out. So definitely, they'll be able to get a solid return for him. I could probably see him get like a first or second round pick and maybe a decent prospect. So definitely, I could see the Flames get a solid return for Hannafin. Uh, definitely not a guarantee he moves, but... It sounds like Hanfin is the name who's out there, and if the Flames are to move a couple of these guys who are in the final year of their deal, Hanfin could very well be the first domino to go. So definitely keep your eye out on Hanfin. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, does Hanfin get moved? And if so, which team do you think would be the best fit and most likely to acquire him? And for what sort of trade package? Definitely love to hear what you think down in the comments. But it does sound like Hannafin's name could be on the block right now for the Calgary Flames. And could be the first domino moved in Calgary this offseason. So definitely going to be interesting to see. And next we go over to the Winnipeg Jets. Now I know we've been talking about them quite a bit over the past little while. But the Jets are probably going to be one of the teams who dominate the offseason in trade talk. And there's a couple of reports out there that have significant impact with the Winnipeg Jets. So first, last week uh, on the Insider Trading video on TSN, uh, Pierre Lebrun said that Pierre Luc Dubois, who did sign a one-year, who did sign his qualifying offer last offseason to become an RFA again this year, is not even willing to try and extend on a one-year deal with the Winnipeg Jets and really does want out. And that the agent for Dubois is going to try and work with the team to find a solution for him to be traded. So it sounds like Dubois is not even willing to sign a one-year deal in Winnipeg. Now they could still try and sign him to like his qualifying offer, 
but given the fact he's a top line center who's been putting up back to back 60 point seasons and is a really solid guy, you don't want to be losing him for nothing via free agency next year. So if Dubois is really not going to be signing with the Jets on a one year deal, I think they have to explore the option of trading him at some point this offseason. Uh, definitely, it sounds like he's still his preferred destination to go is Montreal and that's where he'd like to sign long term. I'm not sure if he'd be willing to extend on any other team but there's definitely going to be some teams who have interest. Elliot Friedman on the 32 Slots podcast last night said that uh, a, a team who a lot of people think could take a run at Pierre Dubois will be the LA Kings. Uh, LA's got some pretty good center depth but with Kopitar entering the final year of his deal and not sure if the he'll be playing beyond next year, which is the end of his contract. Uh, there's a lot of people who have said that Dubois could be a good top six center long term for the Kings if they convince Dubois to sign. So that's the team to watch. Uh, teams like Carolina, Colorado, Boston, like I said, who could use centers. I could also see try and uh, grab Dubois. But still, I think the long term solution for Dubois is Montreal. So I would still expect Dubois to maybe be traded to Montreal this off season. But definitely, if he's not traded, I would expect him to try and go to Montreal via free agency next year. So still, I, I still think the end game for Dubois is Montreal, but it sounds like he's not even willing to sign a one-year deal in Winnipeg, and that he's most likely going to be on his way out uh, at some point in this offseason. As for P Connor Hellebuck, there's also been a couple of reports over the weekend that said that Hellebuck is not interested in signing a extension with the Jets, and he will most likely try and test free agency in the 2024 offseason. So Hellebuck, uh, like we said, Hellebuck, Shafley, Wheeler, all in the final year of their deals, and if the Jets can extend them, there's a very good likelihood that those three guys are moved at some point in this offseason. And if Hellebuck is not going to try and extend, you cannot lose top 10 goalie in the NHL for nothing free agency next year. So in my opinion, Hellebuck is another very likely candidate to be traded, whether it be to Detroit, whether it be to Carolina, whether it be to LA, Pittsburgh, Ottawa, Buffalo. There's a lot of opportunities there for teams who are looking for a starting goaltender. Uh, could Hellebuck sign an extension in a new place? It's possible, but he could also be a rental for another team. So definitely interesting to see, but it sounds like Dubois is not willing to even sign a one-year deal with the Jets. And whether it be Montreal or a team like LA or Minnesota, it does sound like Dubois is going to be traded at some point this offseason. As for Hellebuck, really good goaltender. He's a really good high-level starter, but he does not want to extend uh, beyond this year with the Jets. So with him not wanting to extend as well, it sounds like he'll be dealt at some point to another team who's looking for a starting goaltender. So definitely some interesting news, and it sounds like Winnipeg could be looking at some major changes this offseason, as we have talked about over the past couple of weeks. And it sounds like they could definitely be doing a lot of things over the next couple of weeks. But definitely, it sounds like Dubois not willing to sign even a one-year extension in Winnipeg, and Hellebuck not willing to sign an extension beyond this year. So definitely interesting news in Winnipeg. And finally here with the Philadelphia Flyers, there's also a couple more names out there that I've been hearing about the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, as we talked about on Saturday, uh, Hart, Hayes, and D'Angelo were three names that were being mentioned as possible trade options next for Philadelphia. But there seems to be a couple more options that the Philadelphia Flyers could move. It sounds like there's going to be a fire sale this offseason with the Philadelphia Flyers. And a couple more names to watch out for would be Travis Konechny and Scott Lawton. Now, Konechny was a guy who fit in really well with Philadelphia last year, had one of the team's better point totals, uh, fit in really well with Tortorella, and he is a really good player with Philadelphia. Uh, he was so good that they weren't really entertaining trade out calls uh, around the trade line for him. But now that they're going into full rebuild mode, it sounds like he could be a guy who winds up being dealt. Uh, he has two years left at a $5 million cap it, so it's not too bad. And he's a solid middle six, maybe even top six winger. So there could be a ton of teams who have interest. I've heard some people say that Edmonton should have interest or might have interest. And that could be an option, but I think the Oilers should be looking more at goaltending and defense than forward. So, but there's still a ton of teams out there who could be looking for a top six winger. So in my opinion, if Konechny is available, there will be a ton of teams looking to possibly add him at some point this offseason. As for Lawton, uh, he's a good middle six center slash winger. He's a very versatile forward, so he can play in a variety of different situations. Uh, he's signed for three more years at $3 million, so it's not too bad of a cap hit. And I think there could be a, definitely a ton of interest in him. I've heard some people say that the Sens may have interest in him. 
I think that could be a possibility, especially if they move to Brinkett. I think there could be a couple of other teams who have interest in a good solid middle six versatile forward like Lawton. Uh, he's definitely a light player in the Philadelphia Flyers room, and they do need some veterans to remain with the Flyers for this rebuild, so I don't think it's a guarantee Lawton gets moved, but he's definitely a name to watch out for as he seems to be drawing a lot of interest, as Elliot Freeman said on the 32 Thoughts segment on Hockey Night in Canada. So, definitely going to be interesting to see, but it sounds like Lawton and Konechny could both be added to the long list of the players who could be traded at some point in this offseason, including guys like Hart, Hayes, and D'Angelo as well. So, definitely, it sounds like the Flyers could be heading for a fire sale, and it also sounds like if they can get good enough returns, guys like Travis Konechny and Scott Long could also be on the move at some point this offseason. But it's definitely interesting to see uh, who remains in Philadelphia beyond the offseason and which guys are on new teams come the start of next season. But that's all for the trade rumors. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. Uh, does Dubois get dealt? I think it's pretty likely and given at this point. But if you had to guess which team do you think would get Dubois, and if he goes to that team, does he sign long term? As for Hellebuck, uh, does he get dealt? I think it's a very likely possibility. Love to hear what you think down in the comments, and which team do you think is most likely to land Hellebuck? As for Philadelphia, uh, Konechny and Lawton, two really good forwards who could be dealt at some point this offseason. Love to hear what you think. Does Konechny and or Lawton get dealt by the Flyers this offseason? And if so, which team is the most likely to land one of these two guys? Love to hear your opinion down in the comments. But definitely, that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video and subscribe. I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, trades, uh, off-season previews. Definitely check that out. We'll leave a link to that in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.